Well, welcome. Okay. We have a slightly smaller group. The advantage here is you have more floor space and we'll probably get through some more. So the guys who aren't here, because there are meetings I found out that kind of stuff, they can probably catch up a little bit uh, with the videos once we get them up. If, um, what we did last week, did anyone get the chance to practice anything that we did last week or even the weeks before? Because we got not work and then we started doing the stretching for the tight areas of the body last week, right? Yeah. Did anyone practice any of that between last week and now? Well, I just feel like I'm really tight when I wake up. Yeah. So I think the analogy of looking at my dog stretch every time he got up, I was like, okay, you need to stretch, <laughs> you get up. I love it. Because he's yeah. smarter than you. But, you know, yeah. I just did like the, just very simple, like the arm stretch. Yeah. I feel like, I don't know, it just feels better. And then I did um, sort of like a, where I just hang, I just do a straddle and I just hang down, just kind of let my lower back elongate. And that feels really good. Yeah. But I feel like my my upper back felt better. Good. That's awesome. I've been doing the one where you're on the wall. And you just the C spine. Yeah. You were doing that. You like that? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. They're good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. I was doing ball around the hip and kind of butt, trying to loosen up just the lower core section area. Yeah. And uh, it helps a lot when I'm sitting down and just kind of like makes it so my lower back doesn't feel funky. Yeah. Probably, I shrink like three times. I feel tight. I do like two Uncomfortable. What did you say? I did twice. You did twice? Okay. Good. And does everyone have a win they want to share with the group about what they experienced or anything like that? Matt, Shwai. Um, yeah, so honestly, doing this, it's like these are the tools that the positions I was in today are positions I'm in at work. And the strengthening, the stretching, these are muscles that I'm constantly using at work. So it's just, you know, it feels good having this idea of what I can do to strengthen it. Because, um, you know, even if you do have time sometimes, you're like, well, what am I going to do? I'm, you know, never mind, I'm not going to do it. So having this information, I'm like, oh, you know, I could, honestly, I could do those crawls like that in a controlled, you know, easy manner. Um, and that's just going to strengthen my whole, you know, everything I do for work. So, uh, and then the stretching as well. It's like really helpful in that. It just makes me feel more like in control of the whole thing. So, it's good. So, I'm Vanessa. And um, what I feel like I got up today is that I just felt like it was a workout in a sense. And so, it almost feels like, great, you got a workout done on Friday. And then all of the stuff that... Um, as Matt was saying, we do a lot of crawling and a lot of physical labor, so really engaging the core and um, like just working on the stretching on the lower back and, um, and being having a little bit more strength in the core and the lower back really is helping. But I'm really happy that I feel like I got a workout in today at work, which is like uh, a double man. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Nice. So you see how everyone... So when we go through these, you've got the general information, which we find, we see what works and helps a lot of people. And then each person then picks their own little specialty. See, so like, you know, you're doing your bit, you're doing, you found the six spines great for you, and then you've got, you find, you're doing the hip stuff, which gives you relief. So as we go through, we'll, this is what we want you to do, right? Just pick the bits that's specific for you. So today we're going to get into the, get into the strength stuff. So any areas that you know, we, we're obviously going to target the core, because we know that's important for everybody. Yes. Whether they work or, or don't work. Um, and then we're going to do the head and neck as well, because we know that's part, oh, that's a good one. part of what you guys do. So My neck. <sighs> What's that? Sorry, you need a new neck. You need a new neck? Yeah, so screw this one. Take it out real quick. Okay. So any questions, anything we did last week before we move on? No. For me. What's that? No, for me. Okay. Thank you. Good. All right, so I'm going to ask you uh, a couple of questions. So what causes short, tight muscles? There's two main reasons. Okay. Does anyone have any idea of what, what's one way that shortens the muscles? Not using it. Uh, okay, oh, I'll wait. come back to you. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Let me think about it. You think some more. You said not using it, you're halfway there, and you said overusing over -using it, right? Good. Yeah. So, and not even overusing it, even just using it, right? So like if every day you do this, right, you don't have to do millions of these, so whatever you're using there is going to get short eventually. So it's just how it works. 
So if you look at um, yoga and it's mostly stretching, it's been around 5,000 years, so it's just like, why did they come up with that? So they must have known that the body just from manual would have been pretty physical work in those days, right? Um, that stuff shortens and tightens and then that's not good. So they started doing all these different stretching things, right? right. So, so that's one reason. Good. So we know whatever you use. So now if you look at your work and you go, say your job has to do a lot of this. So now we're using the, that, the back of the head. So we know that area is going to get short. So to stretch that, let's just do a little fun one. Let's say that because that's a common thing. How would we do the opposite of the shortening? Tuck your chin. Bring it down. Okay. And you can put your hands gently behind your head. Two hands. Two hands behind it. I'm holding it a bit more. Just to slightly stretch it down. And that will feel nice. Now here's a little tip. Even before we do that. So if you look forward here. Look, my head's out like this. And I stretch it. It's already been pulled out of alignment. So really what you'd like to do is, yes, that you're on, is we did some of this before. Pull your head back in, pull your chin in, now stretch it down. It's going to feel different. And put your hand behind it and just slightly stretch it. And you can hold that for, you know, up to 30 seconds, but don't pull down hard. Okay, kind of jumping around a little bit, but that's where we're going. But that, from the point, we're going to do strength for that. we we'll see how we do strength. Okay, so you were saying the second way. The one is through usage. And what's the second way? Lack of use. Yes, but there's a little more to lack of use. I was thinking of like the hip flexor, and I, I might not have understood too much about that, but like when you're sitting down all day, yep. and it's just shortened. Why do they get tight? Yep, use, we got that one. And then we've got, what did you say, not use? Lack of use. Okay. Use, no use. So yeah, but if you keep it short, shortened, and especially inactive. So we sit like this. That's the hip flexors are being shortened. Yeah. Hamstrings are being shortened. Eventually, it's going to get shorter and shorter, and then we need to. You get up and you just go, oh, I'm really tight. Right? Those are literally the tightest parts of my body. Yeah. Like very common. Everything, yeah, all yeah. there. Except you're a little younger than me. Yeah. I'm a lot younger. So yeah, it's common. And especially if you're an athlete, you know, you do a lot of sprint, a lot of running, all this stuff's tightening up, tightening up, and then so you need, we need to release it with the knot work, we need to release it with the stretch work, okay? So while we're sitting here, why don't we do 60 seconds just to get moving, let's do some squats. And that's a type of strength exercise. Yeah, I, I've got, I'm at 40 push-ups for the day. Really? So uh, Aaron, Aaron Rusnak started this, he, he's actually, He's been exercising every day, he's been eating different, he's been cutting out things in his diet. And he, I think he's lost like 50 pounds yeah. or when 40 pounds. That? Uh, that I think for about a month. Yeah. And he's been very consistent, he's been bringing in his own meals. Did that uh, start with in relation when we started? Eating? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. It, it was like maybe Must have been right weeks before you guys got here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I'm sure this is like helping him uh, I'm sure. get used to it. But uh, anyway, he's been doing, he just kind of brought it up yesterday, like I'm doing 100 push-ups a day and now I think me, him, and her, and like two other awesome. guys in there. We've all been, we've all been uh, doing, trying to get a hundred in a day. Yeah, it's kind of cool. All right, so you just have sixty seconds. Yeah, I don't want to start until you've started. I'm already at twenty. Ready, set, go. You can count them if you like or not. Now, what you can do to add fun is we can do pendulum squats. So keep going, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to join you a little bit here. So with the pendulum squats, keep doing your squats. We bring in some upper body. So when you're down, your hands are back here, and then you throw them up. And then you come down, and then you throw them up. Good. Legs a little closer together. Good. You don't want them too wide. It's okay to have them wide, but not too wide. Good. Good. And eyeballs out in front, about 15 feet out in front. That'll help keep your head posture. Yep. You've got 20 seconds to go. So you can do a lot of work in one minute. Yep, throw the arms <coughs> up, unless the shoulders are sore. Can you throw your arms up higher? That's it. Can't yep. touch the roof. Swing them back. Swing them back. Matt, let them swing behind Three, you. Three, two, yeah. one. There we go. And was that 60 seconds? Yeah, yeah it definitely was. Yeah, it feels like 120. Yeah, that'll get you warm. All the layers come off. Yeah. 
It's funny that it takes 60 seconds to go from needing a jacket to yeah. nah, like I want to take it off. Yeah. Good. It's a good challenge. It's fun. Yeah. It's good for the planet. Yeah. It's warm up without the heat. <laughs> okay. So now, uh, why don't we, while I ask you, while we're doing our review, there's three types of stretching that we went over. So what I want you guys to do is, I probably didn't show you the stretch, but let's see. Some of you may already know. So you can do this standing or lying on the ground. Let's do a front thigh stretch. Okay? Yep. You can also do that lying on the ground on your side. Okay? Now, ideally, when you do this, try not to grab your foot, try to grab your shin. Oh. Because we don't want to loosen and overstretch the ankle joint. Good point. Wow, I've never done that. That's okay. <laughs> and you can also hold on to something so you're not yeah, like, balancing. Yeah, we don't care for the balance. We don't care for the balance as much. You, you don't get extra points? Or right. no. like, it's a challenge. It's yeah. second. It's yeah, second it's second. It's not hold on to Sam. <laughs> I'm going to make him fun. Yeah. So we just want the stretch. Now, so we're doing, what kind of stretching is this? Is it oh, no, no, it's the thigh, yes, but what type of stretching? Static. Stationary. Yeah, or stationary, or static, hold, I don't care what you call it, as long as you know it's not moving, right? Yeah, right. And then we hold it roughly for 30. You can hold it for less, you can hold it for more. Good. So we just do each side. Now, we did that because we squatted. We can also stretch the hip. So when you work in an area, you can recover. Now, next week's recovery, we're doing recovery. Uh, you can, one of the methods of recovery is to do stretch. So then we stretch the area we just worked. And that'll help you when you do your next activity. So you have to, so you have to squat again. So how could we apply this to work? So you go, oh, you know, I, you know, I was checking a building, I had to crawl under the building, my neck's really tight, it's like it's a little bit fatigued. Good, so we could stretch it, right? right. Or my back feels really stiff after that. So like, okay, what do you do? Stretch. And if you don't know how, you're going you're gonna to learn because we're going to go over some of that stuff. And we did like the C-spine as one classic stretch for the back. All right. So that's one type of stretching. So what's the second type of stretching? So Movement. Yes, so we call that dynamic. So the stretching types. Good. So now do the same for the thigh. How could you involve movement? Um, yeah, we call it butt kickers. So you're bringing your heel up to your butt. Mm -hmm. And you can alternate legs. I like this. Yep, Tracy's showing you. Now, here's the trick. Don't let the hip come forward. So keep the knee behind. You oh, yeah. You, know, you feel the difference. <laughs> yeah. So people go, oh, I don't feel the stretch. Yeah, because we're not stretching. Unless we keep the knee behind the hip. Good. So you can do one leg at a time or alternate it. Oh, see, both the same. Oh, good luck. <laughs> no, not the same. So you can walk. You can say you're out in the park or something. You can walk. Or you're walking to your destination. You go, I'm still loose enough before I get to it. And it might look strange, but, you know, for your advantage, no one else is good. Before deadlifts or squats? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Waking those, wake those things up. Stretch them. That'll also get your hip flexors. Yeah, maybe behind you. Mm -hmm. I feel like the leg's too tight to even get there. Yeah. To the hip flexor as of right now. Yeah. Okay, good. So now the third type of stretching, remember that one? That one, Sam was a star on that show because we used him as a model, remember? Oh, the one where you use the other person? Yeah, we're doing a push oh. pull. I call it push pull. It's yeah. got a fancy name which I'm not using. Right, it's got this Latin word, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. Oh my God, it slipped out of my mouth. So you know that's right. That's right. So yeah, what does it mean? I don't know. No, but anyway, I do with pushing and pulling. So if you just remember push pull, five five five, that's easy. Okay. So you, I want you to try it by yourself. It's nowhere near as good by yourself. But let's just do it for fun. So lying on your back, we'll do a hamstring. That way, we're just practicing the three types of stretching. So we're reviewing it. Right. Okay. So lie down, bend one knee, bring one leg up in the air. Oh, oh, good one, man. <laughs> She's got that one on camera. Okay, one leg up. So now you can put your hands around the leg gently. And it doesn't matter if the knee bends a little bit. So you can just gently, if you can straight, keep the leg straight, one fine. And then just push lightly against your hand. Yeah, yeah. so you're going to resist. You don't know how we did this. So you're pushing, but you've got to push against your own hand. You got the idea? Yeah. 
Okay, it's, it's awkward. Now, if you had a belt or a rope, you could wrap it around the leg. Right. If you've got a shirt that you don't, that's not going to tear, you can wrap it around the leg. So push for five, hold for five, relax for five. And then do it a couple of times. It's not the same as partners, but you know, I just want you to drill and practice what we were doing. And then we'll see if you get some improvement just by doing that. And then, um, yeah. So, you know, the partner stuff's great. And, you know, you guys hang out, you're in the office, you can always help each other do a couple of stretches. So after that, okay, so did anyone get some a little bit of improvement with it? Yes or no? A little bit. I have to loosen my knee each time afterward because yeah. that's where a lot of the tension is. Yeah. And see, as we get into this, when we do recovery, then, we, you know, we can, we can do anything and everything. So we might do the knot work, we might do, you'll see, we'll combine these things. Okay, so why don't we then just do a quick refresh on the stretches we did last week. So we did three main ones. One was sit and reach, so let's do that. Let's do it dynamically. So now I can use the jargon. So dynamic is we're going to move, so sit and reach. First go down gently, see where your fingers reach. Right, and don't force it hard. Remember we've got the pressure no more than seven. And then, and then from your starting point, oh, I'm just past my knees, then we go back and forth. Try to keep your back as straight as you can. That's right, chest high, back and forth. And within five to ten, you should have slightly gone further forward. Okay, so that's your starting point, right? Good. And then, see, what's that? Oh my God. Okay. Oh, Vanessa, you're, you're at your ankles. I'm, I'm at upper shin, so. <laughs> good. That's good. Your back's nice and straight. It's not, it's not uncommon. Yep, tuck your chin. Good. Try to keep your feet pointing straight up if you can. You see, these guys have made oh. them rotate out. Yeah. Now, see, Matt's been working out being quite physical, which is great, but has not been stretching as much as he needs. Does he know? <laughs> and see, I don't even have to see his workouts or be with him. I can just tell by seeing and seeing what he's going through here. But it's okay. So we just need to balance it out. We do strength, we need to do some stretch. Because then it'll help you continue. Yeah. Okay, sit, that's a sit and reach. I'm feeling so nice. <laughs> I got to my ankle. Good. <laughs> it's like electrical firing through all of the muscles. It's just yeah. using them, stretching them. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do C. Uh, let's do, no, we're not going to do C spine on the, on the ground. Uh, but, but we could do a little bit. Let's do floor angles. Because we did them on the wall, and we did them on the ground. So here's the advantage you've got plenty of space. Yep, so you do straight arm, bent arm. So this is for upper body. And you know, you can have your legs straight or you can bend your legs. Mm. If you bend your legs, it just flattens your back. It's your choice what you want to do. So let's do C-spine. Now, <clears throat> while you're on the ground, we can just do a small part of it, just a small part of it. So while you're lying flat on the ground, bend your knees, and then just do the first couple. So it's like a crunch. We're just going to do the crunch, but I want you to feel the lower back. Okay, so hollow out your abs, and then just one, two movements, and then back down. But you're not going to sit up. You're not going to sit up. You're just going to keep your lower back on the ground. See if you can feel that lower back. That's like a mini version of the C-spine, but go on your back. Yeah. Can you feel that? Am I lifting my butt up? No, my butt stays there. What is my neck doing? You're going to lift it up. If the neck's getting tired, you can give it a little bit of support. So, yeah, you're going to have to lift your shoulders because it's a crunch. Yeah, Sam's got it. Good. Breathe out as you do it. Hollow out. You feel the lower back a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. You got it. All right. So just to give you an idea, so you can be in tune with that low, lower back part when you're doing the crunch. 
All right. So now we have the uh, a nice wall here, and there's uh, three of you. So why don't we do C spine leaning on the glass? Okay. So just practice that one. So that one we're doing. It's a dynamic stretch, but it's nice and slow. So you're massaging it in the spine. Yep. We'll do that a couple of times, and then we'll get on with the new. The new version, the new class. But I think it's good to refresh and review. Do you agree? I agree. Yeah. Yeah, you know, one of the ways I learn, just kind of my own thing, is like, yeah, repetition. Yeah. You know, I don't really know, can't drive that route without Google Maps until I've done it five times or yeah. three times, you know. But that repetition helps cement it in and yeah. keep my form. Yep, take it in. So the idea with this is we're going through and we're teaching each segment of the tools and then we can come back, once we finish, go through all the five tools, we can always come back and then just repeat it and then do more and slightly more advanced versions. That way then you, that's how we can repeat and drill. But then obviously the second time around you guys are really familiar with a lot of it so it's really quick. There's not much theory, it'd be like, well, you, you know, what's the two ways we can muscle shorten? Okay. Well then you should remember, if you don't this again, we just write it down and then we go through it again and then we do the drills again. Right. <clears throat> and then we spend more time, need more prac, more prac as we go through. Practice. Yeah, a lot of drilling. Okay, so when we're done with those, you can grab a chair. We'll wrap up in about 20, 30 seconds. Right, so we're going to get into the second segment. Did you get a copy of this? Yeah. It's for sure one of my favorite shirts, which is my hanging. Yes. Nice. <laughs> All you need is a wall. Yeah. yeah. That's it. So also just know, because we like these, yeah, we're good. We're good, just like a little break for a couple of seconds there. Uh, anytime when you're doing this, if you have a win that you want to share with the group or class, it's great, because then we have it on video, and then people can see it later, and they're like, oh, wow, that was good. So they can see the result, how quick it can be with certain things. Yeah. <clears throat> you're doing, like you said, you love doing the C-spine, the forward bend stretch, which is nice. Okay. All right, good, so now we're gonna get into this week's segment, there's a lot to cover, and there'll be a bunch of doing. Oh, okay. he's oh, walking behind the board. You never do that when someone's videoing your past. Oh, really? <laughs> it's like a thing. Yeah, we don't stand. You know, if you're asleep, you don't stand. Yeah. <laughs> Breaking all the rules here. Okay, so today we're covering areas of body that's weak or loose. Um, so we can obviously target your specific things. That will take a little longer. But we're going to target the common areas, like I said, which is going to be the neck and the lower back, which is common for a lot of people. Anyway, and we can always do some more. And as you're doing some of this, we can get into some of the specifics with you as well. All right, so what are weak or loose areas? You know, like what, what is the cause? What causes these things? So first, now you guys can answer this for me because I want your viewpoint on it. Yeah. So what causes muscles to go weak? You've got some ideas. What's that? Like if they're stiff. Like if they're stiff? Yeah. Maybe that's like, different. Like the thug, like you don't never, like you wake up and they, like you just never stretch. Never stretch. Okay. So stiff means it's going to get short and tight. Yeah. So it's different. That's the barrier before. But what causes muscles to get less strong or weak over time? So I'm scared you to think, right? I think Sam was mentioning a lack of use. Is that what you said? Yeah, now that's good, that's one way, inactivity. And so people who don't exercise, inactivity. Do they have much firmness or tone in their body? I mean, you can carry fat on top of strong muscles. You see that, like guys who have big bones are really chunky, right? Yeah. But they're still pretty strong. You have to be to carry that weight if you're three or 400 pound yeah. person, right? It's true. Yeah, they're strong, but they're carrying chunks of fat. And part of it could be genetics too, right? Just, okay. Um, but the classic example is someone breaks an arm and they put it in plaster, right? What happens when they take it out? 
Yeah, atrophy. Skinny. Skinny. It's, atro it's disappeared. So what happens is if, if you just if you all you did if you just stood there and did nothing, the body would just waste away. Even if you ate, then the muscle would waste. You just become more mush, which is skin fat. Because you got skin fat muscle bone, right? And then the bones will get weak too, because bones need movement and stimulation. That's another topic. Okay, so inactivity is a classic way of getting weak muscles. The other way is we, what happens if we overtrain muscles? Yeah, they do. They get short and they get tight and they get tired, right? So when they get tired, that's because we haven't let them recover. Now recovery we're getting into next week. So just think, you know, you did a, a workout or you know you went running or whatever you did, you used your muscles quite a bit. Now, once you've used the muscles, say you squat, you squat a certain many, you did 5,500 squats. The next day, you're like, wow, are you really sore? Okay, you're gonna be sore, it's gonna be short and tight, so we need to stretch it. But then those muscles, are they gonna be as strong, as healthy as the day before? Yes or no? No. No, because they've really they've been used. Yeah. Right? So if you think, right, what happens is when you work out, so here's 100% recovery. When you work out, it goes down, it's a dip. And then if you rest and recover enough, it should come up and then you get this super compensation, right? Where it comes back and it's gonna get a little stronger. Because it's like, yeah, I need to do more. I can only do one push up and then you build it up gradually. Now I can do five. That's because of this compensation. Now, if you didn't give it enough time to recover, it's not going to happen, right? So if we want this, and then you train again, and then see we want that to keep going like that, and then you get, wow, now my performance has increased. Now I'm stronger, right? The person who overtrains, right, they do a workout, boom, and they start to recover, and then they do another one. Do another. I'm doing 100 push-ups every day. Ah. Yeah, not good for the shoulder. It's going to create an imbalance. Okay? We need to do something for the back of the shoulders and we need to give it some rest. Right? So, um, I know I first had experience. I, as a kid, I used to do a lot of push ups every day. Right? I, I've had lots of shoulder problems, all good now. Um, but I look back and go, yeah, because I didn't know what I was doing. I was just a kid and I was just doing stuff. I was creating my own workouts you know, at the age of 14, 15. Why? I don't know. It was just it was in me, it was bred in my body, it was part of me. You know? So, so this is overtraining. So what happens is you're not going to be as strong. So you get a football player, right? They're really strong. Yeah, they haven't recovered. They put them back out in the field, or their leg hasn't healed. Like I think during the uh, the, the um, Super Bowl, the Super Bowl, some guy's knee went right. It's like yeah, because they haven't fully recovered. He, his knee wasn't even strapped. I like why didn't he put something on it? If it, it was a weak link from the past, he obviously hadn't recovered enough, so it wasn't strong enough. And then he could tweak it. He's more susceptible to tweaking it. Anyway, so we just need to know this so we know, okay, what makes things weak. Makes sense. So when you see people like sitting in, like athletes and they sit in ice baths, that's part of their, yeah. that's like, is recovery. that like a, so like a fast recovery so yeah. you can get out and go do whatever you were doing. Yeah. And do something back to back to back. Yeah, that's right. So those guys, obviously there's a lot of money in them, so they should have, and they do have the best of the best. So they have masseuse, they have trainers, you name it. Physical therapy, they have ice baths, all the latest gizmos and, most of the stuff that works pretty well, and they're going to use anything and everything to get these, these, these fine athletes back into shape fast, fully recovered. It's they're amazing. assets, right? They're assets They're worth a lot of money to the to the owner and the, and the company, right? Yeah. And for the athlete, he he or she wants to be on the field or you know or on the court or whatever it is, because that's how they perform. They earn dollars and they love doing what they're doing. Yeah. They wouldn't be there otherwise. Okay. You guys ever seen an ice bath? Yeah. <laughs> um, I've taken an ice shower. I'm pretty sure that was colder than any fucking ice. No. But uh, yeah, and that, that's intense. I'm like, <gasps> oh my god. Like fucking, my heart rate goes up and I'm just like, fuck. Yeah, yeah. you just yeah. gotta reach, reach the point to like where you feel like you're about to die and then your body just becomes numb. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how old I have to be before my heart just pops for doing something like that. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly, that's how it feels. I'm like, I get in there, I'm like, oh my fucking god. My whole body's like cold. I think it's really good for you though. Yeah, I've heard it is. Yeah, they have the bunch of pools that are cold too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay guys, good. So let's go back to here. Thank you for that. Um, so also, we might tie in loose, like weak, loose. They kind of can work together a little bit. So what causes 
or over flexible could be another word we could use, right? Overstretched, right? Overstretched, loose. You can't generate as much force if a joint's loose or you know the support. So let's say you've got the shoulder, say the knee's got ligaments, right? If, if you t take the ligaments off, ligaments are like staples. If you get rid of the ligaments, right? And there's four of them, then there's the staples are missing from here and inside, so the support's gone. Now, if the muscle's are really weak and tired, then that support's gone. So one way to help the joint anywhere, whether it's in the head, neck, lower back, is to keep it strong, so you don't want it overly loose. So what we found is, when you work with people, usually the people have done a lot of stretching stuff, like you know, yoga or Pilates, or whatever, they've done so much. Usually they tend to be women, I've noticed, and they tend to, because the guys don't stretch as much, they do more the lifting, um, so they'll have aches and pains into their whole lower back area and it's because stuff's just overstretched and weakened. So that we have to do a lot of strength work with them in those areas to try to get them up. So we don't want to overstretch an area. Right. I did gymnastics, I did certain sports that loosened you up. It's like, okay, it's just part of the sport. You're going to have to be able to lift your leg up and do this if you're a gymnast, I guess. Right. But when you're 30, 40 and you're older, you know, if your hip pops out because it's overly loose, then what do you do? You don't want to keep stretching it doesn't make sense. So we've got to watch some loose stuff. Okay. This is a science. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dang it. I <You> betcha. <laughs> uh, stretched. People don't think about that, that you could be too loose. Yeah, that's a good point, though. Mm -hmm. So far from being up. I, I'm usually very unsure <laughs> in when it comes to like learning new things, but honestly, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not too loose. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, this isn't here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. So now we're going to, let's get, you can volunteer. No, I did mention we're going to do core, right, and, and lower back stuff. So we're going to target that because we know they're very common areas. Core which is obviously lower back in particular, and then we're going to do some next stuff. Now, are there any other areas you have personally, or maybe you think, or you've seen, or you've heard some of your colleagues from, you know, working, even the guys who just sit all day and type, right? They're like, oh, yeah. You know. So what are common areas do you think that you have in yourself or seen in others that's maybe weak or overly loose? I feel like my knee, for sure. Like knee. I feel like years of playing basketball and volleyball, and yeah. you know, I, like my knee. I mean, I mean, yes. I, I, you know, I feel like it's just unstable, and yeah. so there's probably some loose ligaments or whatever going on in there. Yeah. So that's a good word. Put that there. Unstable. That's another word, right? And in there. Good, and that makes sense. So, like, if we do sports, part of it could be genetics too, right? Um, could be. But you're not the first basketballer to tell me stuff about their knees, right? There's a guy at the gym, Don. He was like six, three, played a lot of basketball. He was old, but you know, he, his main issues were knees because he played a lot of basketball, right? So that's just you know an example. Of he got straight away. Good. So knees. Okay. What about the rope related? Back. Lower, yeah, back. Yeah, lower, back. lower back and then um, like I've, it's not often but I've like crawled and then kind of felt like a sharp twinge like in my lower back uh -huh. and even in like kind of the front hip area it's like as if I hadn't braced my core yes. before trying to crawl yes. and move and then it kind of is like oh and I'm just kind of be careful with it yeah. but you know it doesn't hurt really too much later or anything it's just like my body's like, hey, and then I have to be careful for the rest of the crawl, you know? Yep. Now, Make last week, did we go over activating the core? Did you mention that at all? Yes. The two, two types? Getting punched and then uh, bracing. doing bracing, like uh, like kind of blowing out and then sucking in. Yeah. So like, two opposites. Yeah. Yeah, so bracing. Because if you're going to squat, that's the one where you... Brace. Yeah. Ideally, because if you're doing heavy you stuff, in you want that push. wide. You want a wide oh, tree. Oh, out. Like as if you're pushing against the belt. Just think, you don't want a skinny tree, right, with all the weight going, right? right? Okay. You want a big base when you're squatting heavy. The sucking it in is good for finer stuff, and the physical therapy, that's one of the methods they use to activate core. If like you're doing um, uh, the um, planks, yes. is that an in one? You can do either. Oh, okay. You try. Okay. You can play with it, right? Yeah. Because it's not heavy. You're not. Right. Like if you had someone's going to stand on top of you, right? 
an arm would probably brace yeah. more than hold. Yeah. That makes sense, right? Yeah. Yeah, good. Okay. Good, okay, so we're good here. Don't actually do that though, Matt. What? Have someone have stand on you when you're doing a oh, plank. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's not what we're recommending. Can you put on cleats and stand on my vertebrae? <laughs> yeah. What does the, do the, like the waist trainers, like do those help? Like, you know, like rolls or, yeah, do those, do those do, I mean, do those They're really like do They're like corsets. Anything? Yeah, they yeah. don't really do anything. They though. don't do anything. Well, okay, let's, let's look at it, right? It's not a, not a weight belt, a waist trainer. Um, yeah. the makes the girls look like small waisted, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All that would do, if anything, is just keep it warm. Is that a bad thing? No. You know, is it really going to give me support? Really? Like, does this shirt give me any support for my back or my arms and shoulders? Not really. If you know, if I wrap a little bandage, is it going to really support my knee? Or I put a, a lot of weight on it? Not really. Because it's very powerful. It needs to be really tight and strong. Right? If anything, those waist trainers will probably stop you from using your ab muscles, your okay. muscles. Yeah, your back, your, the best bet is use your core as your corset. So the corset is where you suck it in, where you're working the deepest muscle. It's called transverse abdominis. It wraps around. It's like a good like kind of inside. Yeah, mm -hmm. like it's all really deep. Kind of a couple inches in. It's deep. Right it's your deepest ab. Oh wow. Yeah, the one right at the surface is rectus yeah. abdominis. Everyone can feel it. it's a six pack, right? Then you have ones that wrap around internal, external, oblique, and then deeper than that. You know, yeah. we could always do it, bring up an anatomy, we can do that another time, right? Yeah. Okay, so do, do your own corset. Now, what you could do is, if your back's feeling a little funky, you could wear a weight belt while you crawl, just during the crawl, sure. for a little bit of support. Yeah. But that's not a good long-term thing, because you want to make that strong. Yeah, you don't want to take away the effort of the muscle completely, because then it's not working, mm -hmm. and it becomes even weaker, I would think. Yeah. So if you're putting a stilt or uh, putting a crutch there, yeah. it's going to use that. A proper crutch. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. But like, oh, I'm feeling a little funky. It's okay to wear it, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like if you have to do it and you need recovery. That's part of recovery. It can you help can you as a recovery support. tool. But not as a permanent tool. Right. It's like anything. So you have yeah. to be able to think, well, is it good? Is it bad? Well, is it? Because it's not like black and white. It's like, yeah, it's good. Generally, it's not good for you, right? Okay, good. I have one question. Yeah. So regarding. Um, yeah, like that twinge in the lower back, it makes me think, just because we're on the low of the weak muscle, like, well, first of all, brace properly is important. That's the first thing I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, strengthen the core. Right. And then probably just having that area get stronger over time, yep. controlled recovery, increase in strength, etc. That's going to help that and obviously good uh, core control while you're doing it. Yes. And also, if you look at the board, Remember our training system, rudimetrics, yeah. the basics, rudiments, measure, what do we measure, keep an eye on, what do we monitor, these are our monitoring tools, right. X is for exercise, so B's barriers, that's what we're doing today, this is a lot of work, so we're teaching you how to handle the knots, the tight stuff, the loose stuff, that's really key, that's the first one, right, these are your goals, so to, just to answer your question, what you said is correct, you see, then we have to know how to recover. We haven't gone over that yet. That should be next week's class. Mm -hmm. Then you need alignment, because if you're out of alignment and you're still strong, you're still going to, right? Yeah. You need to know what, how do you adjust it and why and how much, right? Right. And then, and then we need gradients, which is like, how hard do I work? So, you know, I crawled 300 feet and I'm really tired at 200. Do I keep going? It feels like, oh, I'm really feeling like that. Rest right there if you can. Yeah. Five, 20 seconds, maybe longer. So that's applying the recovery tool. And then take off again. So just going all the way and then totally fatiguing it. Now you may be straying something. Right. So, so these are your tools. So these are your monitoring tools for work and life. Okay. Do you like that? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, it's, it's easy to remember to you go brag. You know, it's like rudimetrics, that's a little fancy, but you know, it tells you what do we, what do we keep an eye on? What do we need to watch to get them, you know, to make things safer and more effective? And then these are the tools. All right, so now we're going to get into strength. There's a few different ways to do strength, right? And then if we keep it really simple, we can look at things like you need strength when you are, we have stability strength. This is how I'm going to go into it. And then we need some mobility strength. Okay? So it's two for one. This is interesting. So. With rehab, we're trying to fix an area that you know, needs love. Um, 
you start off with stability. And what is that? We're going to do some of that, right? But then we also need mobility strength. That word is mostly used in fitness to do with oh, how much movement do I have around a joint. But I'm using it here to keep it, to give you the idea that we also need strength when you're actually in movement as well. Right. Right? So we're going to do a plank, right? A low plank from the forearms because we're going to get you moving. We've been sitting for too long. I can tell. I see the clock. Don't need to move. All right? But we're going to apply both of these right now. So when you're ready, just line up together in a row facing me on the ground. Okay? Yep, so lying down. You're going to be moving forward in a minute. So just lie it right down there. Okay. Good. Now right there you may be feeling some tension somewhere. Just This is called the half cobra stretch. Now does anyone feel any tension anywhere? Yeah. Lower back, Lower back. Mm -hmm. and mid back. Okay. Well whatever's tight is going to talk to you. See? So see now we're in barrier number two, which is the earlier one, which is if there's something tight we need to loosen it up, right? So you can see how the sequence of this, first we learn about knot work, which comes first. Then if anything's tight, then we need to address it. And then if anything's weak or loose, we need to address it. The reverse of the C saying you're going the other way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, we didn't get into this yet, but there's three different ways the body can move, which um, we'll get into. I'll make a little note because I want you to, to know this. It's called planes of motion. Now, what's important about that is you want to use that when you're doing strength and stretch, but we'll get into that in a sec. So right now, um, now you can stop. We're going to just do it for fun. We're just going to do it like a 30-second plank. No right. big deal. If you can do one to two minutes, that's good. Any more than that, I get bored, and then I give you the next gradient. So let's do 30 seconds and see how we feel. Okay, ready? Come up on your forearms, and lift up. Good, and hold. The clock's on. Work on your breathing. Okay, lift your hips up a little bit higher. Crunch your abs. If it's way too easy, let me know. I'm shaking. Shaking. Okay, feet a little wider apart, Sam. Good, not too wide. Hip to shoulder width. There you go. So we're going to do 30 seconds. So Sam's getting the shakes. Have you done this before, Sam? No. Nope. Okay, this is core strength for the front of the body. Okay. <laughs> Five seconds to go. Four, three, two, one. Rest. Good. Now, we're going to go around and ask in turn. One to ten. Ten means like it felt so tough I wanted to stop. We start with Vanessa. One to ten. What did that feel like in your abs? Six. Six. Good. Okay, Sam. Um, it wasn't that tough. I was just shaking. Mm -hmm. yeah. Probably like eight. Eight. Good. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Matt. Um. Yeah. Probably like a six or seven. Six, seven. Okay. Good. But definitely, yeah. Obviously, shaking. <laughs> shaking. Now, mm -hmm. shaking just means very weak. Yeah. Just kidding. Yeah. Uh, okay, got to You're small. <laughs> What's that? You're sh like you're you're a shrimp. Like you're a shrimp. shrimp. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically the muscles not conditioned. Even yeah. lie on your side, have a break from the back, and also your neck because you're looking up at me, right? Yeah. So turn to the side. It'll give you a rest. Um, and we just rest your head. You don't have to look at me. Just to rest that neck. So what happens is the nerves are trying to synchronize with the muscles. So if you if you just look here, so here's the muscles waiting for a signal, here's the nerves. And the nerves are trying to like, they're trying to do this. So, oh! So once it's in sync, then it fires, there's no shaking. So it's trying to do this. It's trying, like, trying to give you a signal. Trying, that's all. It just means it's not used to it. It's not conditioned. Right. It's new. And then you'll see this, this will happen to people. They'll go for a hike and their legs start to shake or something. or They're over fatigued. Okay, good. So now that's, this is stability training. So we're strengthening you in those locations. Okay, so what does that mean? Okay, let's do um, Matt. I'll, I'll work with you. Okay, come up into that. Now watch. Let's see if we can hold this. This is how I'm going to test his, his stability. I can just come and see, see how strong his core is. Not too bad. See how I'm pushing him out of alignment? Yeah, yeah that's pretty good. Right? So I can then check to see. This is good. And I can check the other side. And so, stability is the ability to be able to hold your, your space and your position and posture. Okay, rest, man. Very good. Thanks, man. Nice and strong. So, doing that drill, do you, do you like that idea? It's pretty simple, isn't it? Yeah. Now, we just did, okay, let's do the mobility part. And now I'm going to teach you the three planes, and then we're going to get into the core. Okay, so now let's just go up on, on our planks again, low planks. 
Okay, you don't have to do too many of these. All right, and we're just gonna, we're not even gonna time this. I want you in a minute, in your own time. Now remember, if anything causes you any pain or discomfort, just don't do it, you rest. So I want you to crawl forward four or five steps on your forearms, slowly, yeah. And try not to let your hips wriggle around. Try to lock your hips, it's gonna activate your core. Oh my God. And then rest, and then rest. Once you've done three to five, rest. And then after you rest, five to 20 seconds, now we're using the recovery tool. You're gonna to crawl backwards, back to your spot. I think you did better than I did. <laughs> it's not a race, but thank you, Matt. I'm gonna beat you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. That's probably been somewhere between five to 20 second rest. Back. Crawl backwards. Backwards is gonna be a little tougher. Try not to let the hips wriggle, because they wanna rock and roll, left to right. Now, they're doing that, because as they get stronger, they won't wobble as much. It's all core strength. Now, simple and then rest. Okay, you can sit up, you can turn, just get comfortable. Yeah, interesting. That's it for your core. So this is mobility strength. Strength while you're in motion. Yeah. Wow, I like that one. I want to do that a lot more. Do you think it's I mean, that's good with your work? Yeah, that's my job. Yeah. I want to. I want to become a fucking pro at that. Yeah. And when you teach your recovery and alignment, it's going to be awesome because then you're going to know exactly where yeah. your spine should be, where your head should be. Yeah. You probably have some idea already. Yeah. Okay. Crawl a house like that. Imagine well, all your crawls. Your what I'm thinking of is minimizing time under the house. Yeah. <laughs> like if I can get out of there faster, if I can get out of there, you know, with, I'm maintaining this freaking, you know, I'm doing a little exercise here. I mean, with all the information you need. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. Getting the information I need, but. So then it's not a waiting on my body thing. Then you can close them, and then you can dig the hole, <laughs> fill cement, yeah. collect the bucks. There you go. Have you heard that one? The before? motto. That's a motto. So yeah, yeah. Don't tell me that. Dave, yeah. Okay. Good. Now let's. Uh, wow. We're gonna, Definitely yeah. some activation around the belt, the belly area. Yeah. You know, and a little soreness and just kind of. Yeah. And we only did 30 seconds and then we did the movement. <laughs> so you can see we need to do both of these for, yeah. to really get strong in the core and the head and neck. Okay? Yeah, that's different. I've done like the mountain climbers where it's just the removing our legs, you yeah. know, yeah. slowly, but not the walking is different. I mean, walking I mean, you have to control is it. different. It's yeah. way more control. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go to the side. So let's do the oh. side of the, the core. Now you can do it with bent knee. Yeah, bent knee. Or straight legs. So lie on your side. Okay. Good. So now we're doing the side plane. So with, with the three planes of motion, we have to move forward and back. That's the first one. We just did that. Now we need to do sides. How do we do side core? This is how we do side core. So lift up, Matt. And just hold it for you know, just five seconds and then back down. Doesn't have to be long. Yep. You can do it with bent knees or straight leg. Bend your knees. Yeah, I would do it with bent knees. Bend, bend your knees, Sam. Top one. Like that, yeah. Yep, bend on the floor. Yeah, straighten this a little bit. Good. Now bend your knee. Bend your right legs. Kind of like this. Good. Yeah, I'm just having... Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Then, come on, lift your hips up. There you go. Is yeah. that doable? Yeah. Good. Lift your hips up a little high if you can. That's it. Five seconds. Look straight ahead. And then down. Good. Okay. A couple of times and then switch sides. Then switch sides. We're going to do the last one, and this one's for the back of the core. So see, it's no good just doing crunches or something for the front of the body. you got to get all the sides. Yeah, we've got to go all the way around, because the core is the front, the sides, and the back. A lot of people do front plank. As soon as we teach them the side, they're like, whoa, you know, you're doing the front one quite easily, which is great. And you know, as soon as you hit the sides, like they're gone. You're like, hmm. Okay? Yeah. Now the back ones, that's like the newest of all of them for most people. They're like, wow, I've never done that before. Okay, so rest on your forearms. Good. Okay, come up. Come up, Sam, a little bit. Yeah. Good. Knee, uh, legs nearly straight. Come up, Vanessa. Rest on your forearms. Chest out, shoulders back and down. Good. Bend the knees a little bit. Good. Now from there, see if you can lift your butt up in the air and hold for a sec. And then down. Good. The straight of the leg, the harder. We don't want to lock the knee joint. Okay. Point your toes up in the air. Now, if there's any pain, discomfort, just don't do it. Or just, we can do a modified version where you bend your knees more. I put a lot of that in my hamstrings too. That's the right. Back part. Yeah. That's right. So it's going to work hamstrings, it's going to work calf, get knees apart a little bit. So we want 
ankles, knees, and hips all in line. That's the ideal, that's the alignment. Like I said, we have to jump ahead a little bit. When we do alignment, we're going to go over all this stuff. Good, up and hold. Good. My all neck right. gets tight doing that. Yeah, yeah, because you're doing a strength exercise. Right. Remember when we use it, when we do strength, it gets tight, then we need to stretch. That's why we need to balance the strength and stretch. Yeah. All right, guys, have a rest. Very good. And there's, um, so that's it on the physical part today. We have a form for you to fill out. But I want to tell you the third way, so the three planes of motion is you're walking backwards and forwards. Then you're going side to side, which we did with, the, with that, right? But we also did the back. But the other plane of motion is rotation, which we didn't do, which we could do. And we can add a little bit. Let's go back to the front plank. Let's go a little bit the low plank. And all I want you to do is do, okay, get your toes out, good. And then what I want you to do, Matt, you're going to be my model here, is bring, kind of do, bring one hip down, easy, good. Oh. And then the other one, good. You feel that, Matt? No. No. Not at all. to the sarcastic humor. <laughs> jumbo shrimp. Okay. <laughs> jumbo shrimp. Breathe. Yeah. So yeah. now we're just adding a bit of rotation to the ab. Uh, and there's other ways we can do it as well, okay? There's other ways we can do it. <clears throat> All right, and have a rest. Very good, guys. And when you're ready in your own time, uh, please fill out the, the form for today, the feedback form. Woo! Nice. Sounds good. All right. I'm going to count that as 20 push-ups. There you go. I definitely feel like that's 20 push-ups.